You know, part of our overcoming, guys, is, um, is the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And how awesome it is that we have the opportunity as, to, as we gather together as brothers. Yeah. yeah. To worship a God who takes note of our testimony. And it's part of our overcoming. And sometimes it's just getting it out there, you know. Uh, my daughter and my wife are here today, Carissa and Becky, and I'm so glad to have them. They're just a wonderful part of our team, and I wanted you to meet more of our team. And uh, as you're, you're seeing, we're here, guys, to serve you and, and to make sure that this uh, whole ministry gets off the ground here as we're uh, setting up a demonstration site in the backyard of the mission. But God is calling on us as His uh, people to testify and part of our testimony is we worship. We're public worshipers. I've been in China, and I've been in situations there in the underground church where it was uh, very dangerous to sing about Jesus. And um, as you guys know, uh, there are places around the world where it, it can cost you your very life to even mention the name of Jesus. So I got on the bus with some Chinese and I thought, well, maybe they're going to be kind of quiet and they're not going to worship really loud. And then we would meet in underground areas around Beijing and around China. And I thought, well, man, they're going to be really quiet. They weren't. <laughs> And I just thought, you know, if the underground Chinese church can worship God with volume and boldness and courage, um, you know, sometimes it just, it's just this dynamic. And I just wanted to hit this this morning. It's going to help somebody. You know how this dynamic is of, man, just be real quiet. Don't, don't be loud. What does that kind of cause you to do? Want to be loud, right? <laughs> Um, there's just something about somebody saying you can't and you won't. But we are in a Christian age where everybody can, so we don't. Are you following me today? Amen. Or is it too early? There's just this dynamic that says, well, you know what, we don't have to, uh, you know, we, it's not that costly right now. But if we were to put up Constantine wire around the mission... And dare you to come to church or dare you to worship God. I bet you there'd be some of you that you, you might be a little bloody getting in here, but you would be the worshiper God's looking for. Because sometimes it just takes a little cost. Because when things are free and they're without cost, they're cheap. Anybody with me right there? Amen. So a lot of people just have this mentality that says because we can worship God freely everything's okay, there's no real cost associated with it, then I'm going to be quiet. I want us to stand up again. Because I, I want us to be a people who worship God in spirit and in truth. And the truth is, has He not done so much for each one of you? Anybody just give a testimony of how good God is? Amen. Now here's what I want us to do, because I know this is a little uncomfortable, but a little strange. Uh, Carissa and Austin have a, some songs prepared, and I so appreciate them leading. But I want to tell you, here's, here's the kind of worship I like to hear. I like to hear worship that comes from you. Amen. So here's just one thing I love to practice corporately. I love to give everyone the opportunity to say, God, I thank you for, and just shout out something you are very thankful for. And when there's a pause, I want the next person can get a little chaotic, I know. Amen. But when the next, the one, the one person is done giving a testimony of what they're thankful for, I want the next person to say and say, God, I thank you for. And I just want to, in popcorn fashion for a moment, for us to worship God. We don't. How many of you know we don't have to have musical instruments, a PA, or smoke and lights? <laughs> Are you all with me right there? We worship God from our own hearts. And worship is acknowledgement. Worship is saying, God, I see you at work in my life. And I want to magnify and make you bigger than all the stuff that's got me worshiping God things that shouldn't be worshipped. A lot of the things that buy for our attention 
we give more attention and acknowledgement to the negative things and we miss the goodness of the Lord. And I just want to encourage us this morning to give God some praise. So I, I'm just going to open this up and give us a moment. Hey, Pastor, can I read a... Please do. Okay, so we, I had this idea growing up that religion was safe and quiet, this whole theme. Mm. This is, listen to King David's heart. This is Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty firmament. Praise mm. Him for His mighty acts. Yeah. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Mm. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the lute and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise Him with loud cymbals. Mm. Pray, praise Him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lucas. Yeah, I'm a drummer. So I felt all that loud cymbal stuff. But who's, who's got something you just want to thank God for? God, and you're, Panama City Rescue Mission. All right. Thank yeah, you for that, brother. Amen. Amen. God, I thank you for. Who, who's next? Dead alive. Amen. Keep, keeping me sober through the murder of my mother. Yeah. I can't imagine, brother. I can't imagine that's the grace of God. Amen. Being alive, who said that? Yes, yes, absolutely. I'm breathing right now. Yeah. Let everything that has breath. Come on. Yeah, brother. Everything that was, is, and will be. Yeah, Amen. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Giving me the power to say no. Wow. Come on. He does, doesn't he, Austin? It's true freedom. Yeah. Well, I'm thankful for. Come on, guys. I'd like to thank God for giving us His Son. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Somebody else. A chance to choose the right path. A chance to choose the right path. Yeah, go ahead, brother. My soul. Yes. Amen. Yep. Come on, guys. Thank Dig in. For peace. For peace. And sobriety. Sobriety, absolutely. Faith, faith and hope. Faith and hope and patience. Amen. Come on, guys. Let's praise Him. Yeah. Amen. Say it again. The gift of life. For the gift of life. Thank you for that. Yes, it is a gift. Who, who, who else is saying? I don't want to miss anybody. I'm thankful for. Thankful for a physical body that works properly. Yeah. 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 Amen. Do good work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Answer for me. Answered prayers. Yeah. yeah. He really does, doesn't he? Yeah. Come on, guys. Good cooks in the kitchen. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah. I'm, y'all, we've just begun to taste and see the Lord is good here. I'm telling you. For his grace. For his Amen. grace. Come on. This book. For the word, absolutely, that's active and alive. Yeah. Yes. Hidden rock bottom so I can find it. Yeah, yeah. That's a hard one to acknowledge, but yeah, thank you, God. Came to my senses there. Absolutely. Anybody else? God, I'm thankful for. Every time I may have turned my back on him, no matter how many times, he was still right there with me. So yeah, he was. Absolutely. He's faithful. Yeah, he is faithful. Anybody else? For helping me realize that he was the rock at one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's good, brother. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you write that song. (laughs) Amen. He was the rock at the bottom. Thankful for all the hardships that I had to go through. If I can praise him for that yeah now Now, I want us to do something maybe a little different than some of your traditions but I've always just been one that pushes a little tradition I want us to stand if you will guys I know you're it's it's early morning I got up at 530 this morning and uh, rolled down here and I got to tell you all I'm 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 jacked up today I've had my coffee and full of the Holy Spirit today I want us to begin to lift up our voices for a moment in public worship. I, I want us to turn this into, and God, I thank you for, and I, I, 
I want us to recount the goodness of the Lord in our lives. Can we just lift up our voice for a moment and begin to worship Him? Is anybody okay with that? Uh, Just lift up your voice for a moment and let's begin to just worship Him and thank Him for some things. So I just want a moment of corporate worship. And God, we do thank you for the rescue mission. We thank you today for every brother that's here. We thank you for the provision that's on this ministry. We thank you for every staff member that's here, God. And we just bless every person in leadership and those that are contending for the souls of every man and woman and child in Bethel Village and all the ministry that goes on here, Lord. And we give you praise today and we give you glory and honor for you alone are worthy of praise. And we thank you today, Father, that we can worship you publicly, that we're not hiding away somewhere in a closet to worship you under candlelight, that in these United States of America, we can lift up our voice and worship you. And we thank you for this moment in history that as of right now, we can come together and publicly declare that you are good. And God, we seize this moment and we take advantage of this moment to tell you how how good you are and how lovely you are and how awesome you are. And we give you praise and glory today for all good things. We thank you for this garden spot back here. Father, we thank you for the provision, how you're sending. You're sending topsoil and a trailer to haul the tractor and you're sending water catchment and seeds and all the things that we need to set this garden in motion. And God, we just thank you today that we can experience your presence, that when we gather together in there in your name there you are in our presence and we praise you for that today God we give you glory for that and I just bless my brothers today father that they would have a full revelation of your love of your goodness of your mercy of your grace in their lives and father we just thank you that you are so good to us and we praise you today in Jesus name amen amen So I want to quickly hit a couple things and we're heading outside. So just take a seat. I, um, my wife and I and Carissa yesterday, we were out in our garden. Uh, It seems as though that's the only garden I don't get to spend much time in lately. Um, (laughs) It's like it's a strange thing to actually be in our field and out in our garden and you know, we were just continuing to amend the soil. So we've got some, uh, we've got some tomatoes growing right now. And these tomatoes, isn't that a wonderful tomato? Um, these tomatoes are growing, and I'm saying that on a scale of 1 to 10, they're doing about a 7 to 8. Well, what we did yesterday was we brought more life into the soil. We brought more goodness and nourishment and food into the soil. Um, I did not walk out this morning or yesterday and scream at my tomatoes and say, what the heck are you guys doing? (laughs) You know, it's kind of a silly notion, but a lot of... A lot of life can be compared to a a farmer who goes out and screams at his barren field and gets angry at the barren field and he didn't sow anything into that barren field. We'd say, man, that's a silly farmer. Dude, you didn't sow a single seed. And I want to remind us today that the kingdom of God, according to Mark 4, is like a farmer who goes out and sows his seed. And I just want to keep hitting this every time we gather together, guys. Sow unto yourselves righteousness. The result of your day, your week, your month, your year is the result of your, your planting and your sowing and your tending. Now we know only God is going to make this tomato grow. Only God's going to make your life grow. One plants, one sows, and only God makes it grow. But can I tell you that our role here is we're in the soil building phase. Um, we are in the moment of building the foundation of this beautiful garden out here. So as we continue to build good soil from good soil, the seed germinates and the wheat grows all by itself. (laughs) If we're sleeping, we're awake, 
doesn't matter. It grows. It's a beautiful mystery. And I'm just going to say, guys, sow some seeds in your spiritual bank. Sow into one another first. This is my, this is my big challenge to us, guys. If we're ever going to see true transformation in our lives, it's got to start with where you are with who you're around. Y'all ain't helping me today. But I know I'm where I'm supposed to be. If you are going to see anything change out there, you are going to have to deal squarely with right here. This means yes. This means no. This means I don't want to deal with it. If we're going to see anything change in our families at home, neighborhood, area you grew up in, if anything is is to be ever redeemed or blessed in your life, it's got to start with you sowing good seeds into one another here. You've got to begin to love one another right here. And when Austin's in a good mood or he's acting like a jerk, you've got to love him. Austin? Chris. Chris, sorry. Austin. 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 Messed up. Amen. Chris. And and when your brother is kind and when he's not, you're loving. Amen. And when your brother is honorable or dishonorable, you honor. Because you're honorable. My wife teaches you don't honor because everybody's honorable. You honor because you're honorable. I wonder if we so honor if we're going to reap it. Guys, here's a big one. You know, you know the number one thing men are looking for in life? You know our number one need? Respect. Respect. There it is. You guys hit it. Talk to me now. Respect. Now, let me ask you something. If that's your greatest need, if that's your greatest need, that needs to be your number one seed. It needs to be one of the top seeds you grow. I'm already planning for next year's and next this coming spring's garden. And you know, there's just some things I want to major in. I'm going to major in the superfoods, the most healthy foods. I'm going to major in kale and spinach and pomegranate. I'm going to major in things that have the most nutrition and are going to be the most successful in our sales as a market garden. And can I tell you, if we want to harvest and reap respect, you're going to have to show respect. And if we will be men of respect and we will be respectable with one another, God takes note of that and He blesses you with that very thing. But if we are not sowing respect, we will not reap respect. If we're not sowing honor, we will continue to reap dishonor. I'm just going to tell you guys, as I boast in the Lord, I have a lot of people around this world who love and honor and respect me. And you know why that is? I have people coming in this coming week. They're flying in from Washington to visit Becky and I because they love us and they honor us and they respect us. You know why they do? Because we loved and honored and respected them even in some of their hardest moments. See, it's easy to love, honor, and respect people when they're loving and honoring and respectable. But see, that's not the test of a Christian. What kind of faith is it What kind of faith is it that you can only be good to those who are good to you? That's why the real litmus test of whether you're following Christ is not whether you can follow a friend and love a friend. Here's the real test. See, you're going along really good there with Jesus, right? And you're thinking, man, me and Jesus are going along great. And all of a sudden he says... Now love that person that wants to do you in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought I was. Wow. Now you thought, well, I'm only, I'm only going to be respectable, honoring, and loving the person who's my friend, who's kind to me, who's reciprocal. You scratch my back, I scratch yours, man, we roll together. 
What power is there in that? Is there anything compelling about a Christian who can only love good people? There's not. It's not even, it's not even curious. What's curious is when Jesus said to the Roman soldiers, Father, forgive them, for they don't even know what they're doing. You know the people that are ugly and hateful to you? If, if, let's just say that they're 100% at fault in the way they treat you. You know what you need to pray over them? Father, forgive them. For they have no idea what they're doing. So guys, I, I want to encourage us in this moment with each other. Learn to sow in the hard ground. Um, I'm constantly trying to build better soil, but can I tell you, you got to start with where you're at. <laughs> and you may say, well, Pastor Phil, you know what? The ground's really hard. Ground's really hard. I love, uh, I got a little picture um, of a plant growing out of concrete. And I saw a meme uh, on Facebook several months ago. It said, a shout out to all the plants growing through concrete. I just kind of love that one. It just resonates with me. Just a shout out to all the plants growing through concrete. Brothers, I want to give a shout out to all of you. If you're growing through concrete, keep growing. Amen. Keep sowing. Keep building soil. Because I'm going to tell you, you keep building layer after layer, layer after layer, layer after layer, and pretty soon, out of this soil, things grow all by themselves. Imagine there comes a day when you're not trying so hard, you just live in surrender. Imagine the day comes when no longer are you trying to make everything happen. Now it's just happening. <laughs> and that's the kind of life I want, to, I want us to see. I want us to see as a result of good soil, the seed grows. Let's head to the back, guys.